हेलो एंड वेलकम टू दृष्टि आई एस करंट न्यूज बुलेटिन माय नेम इज नील लेट्स बिगिन विद द हेडलाइंस फेट डिसाइडेड ऑन 57 राज्यसभा सीट्स इन 15 स्टेट्स इलेक्शंस वर हेल्ड इन ओनली 16 सीट्स इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया कंडक्ट्स द राज्यसभा इलेक्शंस ड्राफ्ट इशूड फॉर अमेंडिंग इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी रूल्स 2021 इट प्रपोजेस टू सेट अप एन अपेलेट फोरम फॉर प्रोटेक्टिंग द इंटरेस्ट्स ऑफ यूजर्स Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology prepared the draft. India and Israel signed the vision statement. It aims to further strengthen defense cooperation. Letter of intent also exchanged between both the countries. Government of India launches Jan Samarth web portal. This portal will bring credit linked government schemes on one platform. It aims at promoting financial inclusion. and india lagging in achieving the sustainable development goals sustainable development rankings drop for the third year in a row aim to achieve all 17 goals by 2030 let's begin with news of the week recently a singer hailing from mansar district of punjab was shot dead since his assassination the issue of gun culture in india is once again in the headlines The Indian Arms Act 1959 exists for regulating the use of guns in India. Under this act no person may acquire, hold or possess any firearm or ammunition unless he holds a license issued in accordance with the act. This act provides that only a gun dealer or a member of a rifle association recognized by the central government can own more than two guns at a time. Besides, an international medalist or a noted shooter is allowed to have a total of 12 guns for shooting practice on the other hand junior target shooters or aspiring shooters may have two weapons for shooting practice in addition to these exemptions the shooters are allowed to own two guns with the same license as civilians however the act prohibits the possession or sale of guns to certain individuals these individuals include a person who has been convicted of offenses involving violence or moral turpitude and has not completed 5 years after serving his sentence besides persons below age of 21 having an unsound mind and out of jail on a bond cannot own a gun under the indian arms act 1959 a license has to be obtained from the competent authority to possess guns a license is valid for 5 years from the date of issue the license can be renewed only after the expiry of the license's validity the authority has to mention valid reasons for not issuing the license Moreover the central government can prohibit the possessing or carrying weapons in designated disturbed areas in addition individuals are also not allowed to change or remove names numbers or other identification marks inscribed on guns if any person manufactures or transport guns or ammunition in contravention of the provisions of the act then he shall be punishable with imprisonment of not less than 7 years similarly possessing selling or transporting prohibited arms or guns is punishable with imprisonment of not less than 7 years persons associated with syndicate engaged in illegal arms trade can be punished with imprisonment of not less than 10 years and in some cases with life imprisonment and a fine the rajya sabha elections held on june 10 had been in the news for many reasons rajya sabha elections were to be held on 57 seats in 15 states however elections were held in 16 seats belonging to haryana maharashtra rajasthan and karnataka as 41 rajya sabha candidates have been elected unopposed last week there are 5 rajya sabha seats in haryana 18 in maharashtra 10 in rajasthan and 12 in karnataka the state with most rajya sabha seats is uttar pradesh with 31 seats the fourth schedule of the constitution of india mentions the number of rajya sabha seats Rajya Sabha is a permanent house and it cannot be dissolved. One third of its members retire every second year to ensure its continuity. The term of a Rajya Sabha member is 6 years. At present, there are 245 seats in the Rajya Sabha out of which 12 members are nominated by the president. The members nominated under Article 80 sub clause 3 of the constitution should have special knowledge or practical experience in fields such as literature, science, arts and social service. There is a provision for the nominated members that they can join any political party within six months after being appointed. Giving importance to union territories in Rajya Sabha, three seats have been allotted to Delhi and one seat to Puducherry. The Central Election Commission is responsible for Rajya Sabha elections. 
Rajasabha members are elected indirectly by the state legislators. They are elected according to the system of proportional representation through a single transferable vote. Only elected members of the Legislative Assembly participate in this voting. Moreover, the system of open voting has been adopted in place of a secret ballot. However, the representation of the states in the Rajya Sabha is not based on equality but on the basis of population. That is, larger states in terms of population have larger representation and smaller states in terms of population have lesser representation in the Rajya Sabha. Mining and its related issues make headlines for one reason or the other. Recently, the Supreme Court reprimanded the Odisha High Court for the negligence being done at the level of provisions and compliance procedures related to mining. Besides, the High Court has been ordered that the matters related to approval and status quo of mining cases should be disposed of within six months. Odisha High Court had allowed the companies to keep on mining, maintaining the status quo of the old mining approval of the companies. These mining companies were doing indiscriminate mining based on the High Court's permission. The Apex Court, while objecting to this, has said that the mining companies are required to obtain forest clearance by the central government and other authorities before mining. But the companies have not followed the due procedure. Therefore, the mining activities currently being carried out by the companies are illegal. Hence, the Apex Court has stressed that the mining companies must obtain forest clearance. It is worth mentioning that the responsibility of developing and regulating minerals has been given to the state government, whereas the central government has the right to make mining related laws. Exercising these powers, the central government has passed the Mines and Mining Development and Regulation Act 1957. Following this act, the state governments regulate mining in their respective states. The mining companies are required to obtain environmental approval from the Ministry of Environment after obtaining mining permission from the state governments. The ministry allows mining in any area after assessing the environmental impact. Recently, the Supreme Court, while hearing a petition, has issued some guidelines with respect to Eco-Sensitive Zone or ESZ. The Supreme Court directed that every protected forest, national park and wildlife sanctuary in India should have a mandatory Eco-Sensitive Zone of at least 1 km around the prescribed boundary. The Apex Court's verdict has come on a petition filed for the protection of forest land in Nilgiri district of Tamil Nadu. The Supreme Court in the newly issued guidelines has stated that if there is already a buffer zone of more than 1 km around a national park or protected forest, then the status quo will be maintained. However, if the demarcation of the buffer zone around them is pending a statutory decision, then the court's direction to maintain the 1 km safety zone would be applicable until a final decision is arrived at under the law. The Apex Court directed that mining within the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries shall not be permitted. Also, no construction or permanent structure shall be allowed within the eco-sensitive zones. It will be the responsibility of the principal chief conservator of forests and the home secretaries of the states to implement the court's verdict. Also, the principal chief conservator of forests of East State and Union Territory has also been directed to prepare a list of the subsisting structures present within the eco-sensitive zone and submit its report to the Apex Court within three months. Eco-sensitive zones are notified by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change under the Environment Protection Act 1986. Generally, an area of 10 km around protected areas, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries is included in the eco-sensitive zone. However, in the case of sensitive corridors and ecologically important areas, an area of more than 10 km can also be included in the eco-sensitive zone. The basic purpose of eco-sensitive zones is to restrict and regulate various activities taking place around the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries so that the ecosystems adjacent to the protected areas are not harmed in any way by these activities. Recently, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has published a new draft to amend the Information Technology Rules 2021. The amendment draft proposes to form grievance appellate committees for redressal of grievances of social media users. Although the Information Technology Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Rules 2021 provide for a robust grievance redressal mechanism, but there are various such instances which suggest that the grievance redressal officers appointed by social media companies or intermediaries do not provide satisfactory and fair redressal of complaints of their users. In such a scenario, it has been proposed to constitute a grievance appellate committee 
for protecting the rights and interest of these users. Grievance separate committees will be constituted by the central government. These grievance separate committees shall consist of a chairperson and some other members who will be appointed by the central government through a notification. These appellate committees will review content moderation decision taken by social media companies such as Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. These appellate committees will also be empowered to change the decisions taken by social media companies. For example, if a user is not satisfied with the content moderation decision taken by the grievance redressal officer of a social media company, then he or she can appeal against the decision to the grievances appellate committee appointed by the government. Then the concerned social media intermediary will have to comply with the orders issued by the committee. At present, the users can only approach the courts against the content moderation decision of these companies. Furthermore, the new draft also suggests assigning additional responsibility to the grievance redressal officers appointed by the social media companies. It states that if a user makes a complaint about a content that is deceptive or infringes on any copyright or threatens the integrity of India, then it shall be addressed by the grievance redressal officer at the earliest within 72 hours. At present, grievance redressal officers have 15 days to process and resolve user complaints under the existing rules. Regarding the proposed draft amendments, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has stated that the constitutional rights of citizens will not be violated by any technology platform by ensuring new accountability standards. In addition, these proposed amendments will remove the shortcomings of IT Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Rules 2021. India and Israel have recently inked a vision statement to further strengthen long-standing defense cooperation between both the countries. This vision statement has been adopted in a meeting held between Defense Minister Rajnath Singh and his Israeli uh, counterpart Benny Gens. Furthermore, a letter of intent was also exchanged in the meeting to enhance cooperation in the field of futuristic defense technologies. During this meeting, topics such as strategic global challenges, military cooperation, cooperation in the defense industrial sector, as well as joint research and development were discussed. Expanding technological cooperation with a focus on military training, unmanned aerial vehicles and defense sim capabilities was also discussed in the meeting. Besides, the cooperation agreement between DRDO and Israel Directorate of Defense Research and Development was also deliberated upon in the meeting. This agreement will play a cardinal role in enhancing the development and technological collaboration between both the countries. Israel is a technological superpower and India is an industrial superpower. In such a scenario, this vision statement will aid in increasing the mutual defense cooperation between both the countries as well as enhancing the capabilities of both the countries for meeting the new challenges. Moreover, India and Israel are facing similar challenges which include protecting their respective borders, fighting terrorism, etc. Against such a backdrop, the vision statement will make a significant contribution in ensuring the economic and security interests of both the countries. Earlier, in October 2021, India and Israel also agreed to create a task force for preparing a comprehensive 10-year roadmap to identify new areas of bilateral defense cooperation. The central government has recently launched a Jan Samarth portal by taking a new step towards financial inclusion. This portal is special because it will facilitate people in getting loans easily as one will not be required to physically visit the bank for getting a loan. This portal covers about 12 types of government financial schemes. Recently, iconic week celebrations of Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Corporate Affairs were held as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Jan Samarth portal and released special coins of 1, 2, 5, 10 and 20 rupees denomination during the inaugural ceremony. Jan Samarth portal is a national web portal which connects the credit-linked government schemes of the central government on a single platform. The advantage of this portal is that a person interested in taking a loan can check the eligibility for the given government scheme and apply for the loan through the portal. This portal will provide information about government schemes and check a person's eligibility as well as aid in providing digital approval from banks or financial institutions. More than 125 banks and financial institutions have been linked to provide loan facilities under this portal. Furthermore, eight ministries have been brought on this platform for covering maximum government schemes. Government financial schemes on this portal are divided into four categories of loans. The government believes that this division of loan categories will make it easier for people to take advantage of government schemes. 
This portal mainly focuses on education, agricultural infrastructure, livelihood, and business related loans. Indian scientists have achieved a scientific milestone in the research related to COVID pandemic. Researchers from IISC, that is Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, achieved this milestone when they created a new class of artificial peptides or mini proteins. Scientists are claiming that this protein created by them is capable of inactivating or fighting viruses like SARS-CoV-2. These mini proteins can prevent virus entry and reduce the ability of the virus to infect a person. Scientists have used a mini protein called SIH5 to target the interaction between the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 and ACE2 protein in human cells. The spike protein is a complex of three identical polypeptides containing a receptor binding domain or RBD. RBD binds to the ACE2 receptor on the host cell surface, facilitating viral entry into the cell. The SIH5 mini protein was designed to block the binding of RBD to human ACE2. This can simultaneously inactivate multiple spike proteins of the same virus and even multiple virus particles. Recently, a team of researchers from Center for Science and Environment, a not for profit organization, located in Delhi, visited Sukhbir Agro Energy Limited Power Plant situated in Kurukshetra, Haryana. This visit was aimed at studying the operation and efficacy of the biomass power plant based on vibrating grate boiler technology installed in the year 2022. The vibrating grate boiler technology was invented in Denmark. Power plants based on this technology are capable of using all types of agricultural residues including stubble as fuel. Whereas in the conventional biomass plant being used so far, only some selected biomass can be used as fuel for power generation. Biomass power plants work like coal power plants. The only difference is that instead of coal, biomass is used as a fuel to generate electricity. Vibrating grate boiler biomass plant uses vibrating grate to break biomass into small pieces. Vibrating grate makes it easy to use any biomass as fuel. Furthermore, this system does not require any major structural change to accommodate any kind of agro residue, making it a better option for stubble disposal. The biomass-based boiler is as efficient as a coal-based boiler. The average steam to fuel ratio of this biomass fired boiler is 4 to 4.5 and the efficiency is also achieved up to 85% which is equivalent to the coal based thermal power generation. According to the Ministry of Power, about 2.6% of the total electricity demand of India is met by biomass. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has also announced central financial assistance for promoting power generation from biomass such as agro based residue. According to a report released by Center for Science and Environment or CSE, three out of every four river monitoring stations in India have recorded heavy metal pollution. These stations have recorded hazardous levels of heavy metals like lead, iron, nickel, cadmium, arsenic, chromium and copper. High levels of pollutants were found in 10 of the 33 monitoring stations of River Ganga, the lifeline of India. Mining, scrap industries and various metallurgical industries release a variety of toxic metals into the environment. These metals reach the rivers through various means and increase the pollution level. These heavy metal pollutants have adverse effects not only on humans but also on other animals and plants. There are 764 river quality monitoring stations in 28 states of India. Central Water Commission tested water samples collected from 668 stations for detecting heavy metals between August 2018 and December 2020. The demand for coliform and biochemical oxygen was high in 239 and 88 stations out of 668 stations included in the test which indicates that wastewater from industry, agriculture and domestic household was treated poorly. According to the State of India's Environment 2022 in figures report, some degree of erosion has occurred in more than a third of India's coastline between 1990 and 2018. West Bengal is the most affected as the coastline erosion is more than 60% in the state. The causes of coastline erosion have been attributed to frequent cyclones, sea level rise, anthropogenic activities such as construction of ports, beach mining and construction of dams, etc. The report also highlights that the total forest area of India has increased by 0.5% between 2017 and 2021. However, most of the growth has been in open forest areas which includes commercial plantations. There are about 77.53 million hectares of forest cover in India. On the occasion of the World Environment Day that is June 5th, 2022, the National Institute of Urban Affairs or NIUA and the World Resources Institute or WRI 
jointly announced leaders in climate change management or lccm it is a practice based learning program it aims at building capacity among urban professionals to play a leading role in climate action across sectors and geographical locations it will be a face to face program myso based administrative training institute or ati has entered into a tripartite memorandum of understanding with niua and wri india to facilitate this program the ati has become the first delivery partner of this lccm program lccm aims to achieve india's climate commitments for this lccm envisages enabling 5000 professionals including middle to junior level government officials and frontline workers and preparing them to champion the climate change resilience and mitigation solutions while launching the program the minister of housing and urban affairs stated that this program will not only combat climate change but also build a new path of sustainable development that fulfills our economic conditions the lccm program will have four phases phase 1 is an online learning module which will be completed in 8 weeks phase 2 is a face to face session which will last for 4 to 6 days phase 3 mandates participants to complete the project over 6 to 8 months and attending exposure visits phase 4 involves networking and establishing a community of practice defense procurement proposals worth rupees 76390 crores were approved recently for attaining self reliance in the defense sector the defense acquisition council or dac chaired by defense minister rajnath singh has given its approval to the capital acquisition proposals for promoting indigenous procurement of military resources required for the three forces the dac has accorded fresh acceptance of necessity or aon for procurement of rough terrain forklift trucks bridge link tanks wheeled armored fighting vehicles anti tank guided missiles and weapon locating radars for the indian army it is noteworthy that the ministry has only accorded aon for the purchases which is just the first stage of a long winded acquisition process conversion of aon into a contract and actual delivery of military equipment and platforms may take around 5 to 15 years furthermore for the indian navy the dac has accorded aon for the purchase of next generation corvettes or fighter ships these next generation corvettes will play a cardinal role in surveillance missions escort operations surface action group operations search and attack as well as coastal defense these corvettes will be manufactured using the latest technologies based on the new in-house design of the indian navy for the indian air force the dac has accorded aon for the manufacturing of dornier 228 aircraft and sukhoi 30 mki aero engines by hindustan aeronautics limited for promoting indigenization in the aero engine material besides the digital coast guard project has also received the approval of the dac this is in line with the government's vision for digital transformation in the defense sector under this project a secure pan india network will be established for digitization of aircraft operations logistics finance and human resource processes in the coast guard this crucial decision related to promoting indigenous defense procurement and manufacturing will not only give a substantial boost to the indian defense industry but will also reduce foreign defense procurement expenditure a new report released recently has revealed that india is lagging behind in achieving the sustainable development goals or sdgs india's preparedness for these goals has deteriorated in comparison to the other countries over the past few years india's ranking in the global sustainable development report has dropped for the third year in a row india ranked 121 out of 163 countries in the global sdg index 2022 India was ranked 117th in the 2020 and 120th in 2021. Recent reports claim that India faces major challenges in achieving 11 of the 17 SDGs. As a result, India's global ranking in SDG preparations has deteriorated. Moreover, the SDG 8 of ensuring decent work for all in India has become even more challenging. According to the report, India's progress in about 10 of all SDGs is same as in 2021. These goals include SDG 2 on ending hunger, SDG 3 on good health and well-being, and SDG 6 on clean water and sanitation. Further, the report mentions that India is on track to achieve SDG 13 of taking immediate action for tackling climate change. SDGs are a set of 17 goals to be achieved by 2030 by various countries. The Sustainable Development Solutions Network has been tracking the performance of 163 UN member states on these goals. since 2015 let us now look at the five questions based on today's bulletin questions for this series are first question is consider the following statements 
One, recently India and Israel have signed a vision statement to further strengthen cooperation in the environment and space sector. Two, the vision statement will help in promoting defense cooperation between India and Israel and in enhancing capacity building for meeting new challenges. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two or neither one nor two. Next question is, consider the following statements with reference to the eco-sensitive zone. 1. Eco-sensitive zones are notified by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. 2. Eco-sensitive zones are created for restricting and regulating activities that take place in and around national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Next question is, consider the following statements with reference to the vibrating grade boiler technology. 1. The vibrating grade boiler technology was invented in Denmark. 2. The power plant based on this technology is also capable of using straw as fuel. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Next question is, recently fresh acceptance of necessity has been approved for defense procurement. The defense items included in the acceptance of necessity list are 1. Rough terrain forklift trucks 2. Bridge laying tanks 3. Wheeled armored fighting vehicles 4. Anti-tank guided missiles 5. Weapon locating radars Which of the above is or are the defense product or products included in the acceptance of necessity list? 1 only, 2 only, 1, 2 and 3 or 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Last question is, consider the following statements with reference to the SDG Index of India. Year and Position 1. 2022, 121st 2. 2020, 117th 3. 2021, 120th Which of the above is or are correctly matched? 1 only, 1, 2 and 3 3 only or none of the above. So for the time being, that's all in this bulletin. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe this to us Hindi, English and PCS YouTube channels. At the end, let us have a look at few more events of the last week in other news. Recently, the 19th edition of International University Rankings was released by the London-based Global Higher Education Analyst Body, QS that is Kwaka Reilly Simons. The Indian Institute of Science Bangalore has been ranked as the fastest growing South Asian university in the rankings. It is ranked 31st among the top 200 universities in the world. IIT Bombay has also been ranked 172 while IIT Delhi has been ranked 174. Recently, the Union Home and Cooperation Minister inaugurated the National Tribal Research Institute in New Delhi. This institute will work to highlight tribal concerns and issues in the educational, executive and legislative spheres at the national level and for all-round development of the tribes. During the inaugural program, an exhibition showcasing the achievements of the Ministry of Tribal Affairs was organized. According to the notification issued by the Air Quality Management Commission, the use of coal in the industrial and domestic units falling under Delhi NCR will be completely banned from January 2023. This ban will not apply to thermal power plants which contribute the most to air pollution. The ban will be imposed from October 2022 on areas where piped natural gas supply is available and from January 2023 on those areas where piped natural gas is not yet available. Tamil Nadu has topped the state food security index 2022. Gujarat and Maharashtra are in second place while Goa is in the first place among smaller states. Among the union territories, Jammu and Kashmir has secured the first rank while Delhi has secured the third rank. The state food security index measures the performance of states based on five parameters set by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. State food security index is released by FSSAI. 
Recently, the Union Cabinet has approved the handing over of 10 in-orbit communication satellites from the Government of India to the public sector company New Space India Limited. The Union Cabinet has also approved to increase the authorized share capital of New Space India Limited from 1,000 crore rupees to 7,500 crore rupees. New Space India Limited is the commercial arm of the Indian Space Research Organization. Mithali Raj, the captain of the Indian women's cricket team, has announced her retirement from cricket. Entire cricket career spanned 23 years. Mithali Raj, the highest run scorer in women's cricket, has been India's most successful woman captain. Mithali made her debut in cricket in 1999 at the age of 16. The Union Civil Aviation Minister recently unveiled the National Aerosports Policy. The policy emphasizes on creating a four-tier government structure to promote 11 disciplines including ballooning, paragliding and aerobatics. Recently, the Union Home Minister inaugurated the Khelo India Youth Games 2021 in Panchkula, Haryana. Khelo India Youth Games was organized for the first time in 2018. The Khelo India Youth Games 2021 consists of five traditional sports namely Gatka, Kalari Payattu, Thangta, Malkham and Yoga. Gatka, Kalari Payattu and Thangta are traditional martial arts included in the Khelo India Youth Games 2021. Recently, the National Cadet Corps has launched the latest edition of the nationwide flagship campaign Puneet Sagar Abhiyan. It aims to clean plastic and other waste from other water bodies including beaches, rivers and lakes. It also aims at promoting awareness among the local population about the importance of keeping the beaches and river banks clean.